And um, this is, uh, uh, you can see it's one of the strongest storms we've had. And Tracy? Thanks, Okay, so um, Super Typhoon Hima is the fifth Super Typhoon this year. I think the average around this time of year is about three. It's also the second most intense uh, tropical cyclone this year in the North Pacific behind Maranti, which was back in September. Um, there were also two different typhoons that hit the Philippines uh, within within a week. Uh, Haima was the second typhoon to make landfall over Luzon, the island in the North Philippines, uh, in four days after Typhoon Sarika. And this plot, this uh, image here, on the left shows Haima during its peak on October 18th. Uh, you can see the clearly defined eye, a really large eye. And then really just about 24 hours later, uh, on the right, is when Haima moved over uh, northern Luzon. And you can see that the, uh, the storm had weakened and the eye had completely filled in. This is a satellite image of Sarika uh, with Haima following behind. And uh, in the bottom left is the track for Sarika. Uh, Sarika got to Category 4 strength and uh, basically moved south of where Haima was moving. Uh, Sarika also seemed to develop much closer to the Philippines than Haima. Haima developed much, much farther east. Um, but you can see that Sarika actually was farther south and moved basically uh, the border of China and um, Vietnam. Haima, on the other hand, was farther north and uh, actually became Category 5 uh, super typhoon with 165 mile per hour winds, and, but then significantly weakened, uh, but was still a very strong storm when it moved over the northern part of Luzon. Sarika was farther south and moved over the central part of the island. And then uh, Haima also moved farther north uh, over eastern China. So this is just Haima's track here. And it shows the let's see the mouse. Um, it shows the track, and uh, right around the time October 18th, when Haima peaked, again the uh, Joint Typhoon Warning Center estimated maximum one-minute wind, sustained wind of 165 miles per hour, around 18 v on October 18th. The, min the minimum pressure was estimated to be about 915 millibars, although I saw even some estimates down to 900. Uh, the center again made landfall over the tip, the northern uh, part of Luzon, around 15V on uh, October 19th. And uh, Haima developed on October 14th, and again downgraded to a typhoon before making landfall uh, with 140 mile per hour winds. This is the sea surface temperatures uh, from tropical tidbits on. Uh, 60 October 19th, and it shows generally close to 30 degrees Celsius uh, temperatures. So um, definitely helps with the strengthening of Haima. And also colder waters as you get closer to the uh, eastern China coast. This is a uh, an animation of Haima during its peak. You can see the perfectly symmetric eye. And then, and this is uh, this is around 18Z on October 18th. And then this is an animation on the 19th, uh, about 24 hours later. And you can see that the eye completely filled in and the storm weakened as it was moving right around over uh, the city of Santa Blanca. And then here's a few uh, satellite images from Himawari. Uh, again, right during the peak. And then uh, the eye completely disappearing as it moves over the island. And a water vapor image. You can see how large the circulation is and the uh, high amounts of water vapor associated with the storm. Uh, I wanted to include this. It just shows uh, the Philippines. And uh, I circled here the island of Luzon. And you can see that the, the, the um, population is it's more heavily populated in the southern side of Luzon, uh, which is closer to where Sarika moved over. Uh, Haima was again farther north where it was less populated. 
this is from the Joint Typhoon Warning Center. It just shows the track. Uh, again, the storm made landfall uh, northeast of Hong Kong over the uh, city of Shanwei. And this is from October 20th. It shows Haima actually was moving over the South China Sea, and this is after it moved over the South. And the storm actually started to form an eye again, interestingly, but was still weakening uh, as it was moving towards eastern China. These are the upper level winds, and uh, you can see the anti the anticyclonic circulation that helped to move uh, Haima to the north and west. And then the 500 millibar height anomalies show the high pressure uh, to its north north and east, again helping with the steering flow uh, towards eastern China. And then these are the forecasted tracks from the H website. Uh, as I usually do, I, I look only at the 12 Z cycle for the sake of time uh, from October 14th to the 20th. So right around when the storm developed and was named all the way to as it was um, moving towards China after moving over the northern Philippines. <laughs> this is uh, from 12 Z to 14. Only two models are plotted here, the h works in purple and the NAVS gem in blue. And I have the stars for verification. You can see that the H wharf was actually just a little bit too far to the north for some of the tracks. It looks pretty good as you get closer to Luzon. Um, it, it only went out to 120 hours here, but it looks like it was going right towards northern Luzon. The NAV gem uh, looks pretty good, but then right around Luzon, it, it looked like it was too far to the north. And this is 120 hours before landfall. 96 hours before landfall. Uh, now we have the DFDL plotted here in the lighter green. Uh, you can see that this model was kind of an outlier for this cycle. It was farther north and actually showing um, a potential landfall over southern Taiwan. The other model models were farther south. Uh, the NASDAQ continues to be too far to the north. The DFS in the darker blue is also just a little bit too far to the north. Um, the H wharf actually looks like it has the best track here. And uh, just three days before landfall, again, the H wharf seemed to look the best um, farther south. The GFS had a pretty good forecast here, maybe just a little bit too far to the north. Uh, GFBL continued to be too far to the north, even 72 hours before landfall. And the, the models differed on where over eastern China uh, the storm was hit. I think the H wharf and GFS, I guess, is kind of in between there. The GFDL was too far to the north. 48 hours before landfall. Um, the models are in better agreement now. The, uh, the GFDL is still a little bit too far to the north. And the GFS looks better now over Luzon, but is actually a little bit too far to the north uh, over um, eastern China. And then 24 hour forecast, now uh, all the models are in pretty good agreement by this time. And then this is about the time that the storm is making landfall over the northern Philippines, around 12 on the 19th. And then for the, uh, for the forecasted intensities, I looked at both uh, maximum winds and minimum pressure. Uh, the same cycles, all the 12 Z cycles, 14th and the 15th. So the 120 hour forecast on the left is the wind in knots and the right is the minimum pressure. Uh, again, we only have the nav gem and the H wharf here. You can see that the nav gem was too weak. The H wharf uh, was doing pretty, pretty well up until the 96 to um, 108 hour forecast. It, it missed out that the storm would go up to 140 knot winds. Um, but actually the minimum pressure forecast looks pretty good for the H wharf. Just uh, a little bit too weak. And I, I made these stars red. That was the time of landfall over uh, Luzon, northern Luzon. 96 hour forecast. You can see that all of the models are too weak uh, for the maximum winds. The H wharf and the co amps TC in yellow seem to be the best here. I, I would say the co amps TC looks the best. Um, going high enough into the 140 uh, range for the wind. 
the age warp was too weak. And uh, for the for the minimum pressure, uh, the models were pretty good for the most part. Um, the nav jam was too weak. The H warp and the GFDL generally looked the best for the minimum pressure forecast. Um, interestingly, the GFDL was the deepest here, but the timing was a little bit off. It was really the only model that showed getting as uh, as far down as 920 millibars, but again, it was too slow compared to what actually happened. In this case, the red, what was the red kind of that? The red is probably the joint typhoon warning sign. So they had a higher intensity forecast than any of the models? Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, so that, that's the best, actually. Best model is the Korean. Yeah. Uh, the 72-hour forecast. Uh, the GFCL here showed a huge drop in the wind, which didn't verify. Um, the h work looks pretty good. It showed more of a gradual weakening uh, from the peak. And uh, the GFDL also has <coughs> for the pressures to be too low. Again, uh, three days before landfall. 48 hours. Um, now the models are generally looking pretty good with the maximum wind. Um, the h work and the GFDL minimum pressure forecast were generally too strong for um, many of the forecast hours. And then 24 hours before landfall. Um, most of the models are capturing the weakening here. The GFDL was slightly too weak. The NAV gem was also too weak with the wind, especially in the earlier forecast. Um, most of the models were actually too low with the minimum pressure. Again, the h work here was, uh, was the lowest of the models. And then this is about the time of the uh, landfall over Luzon. Uh, the GFDN, the NAV gem, the GFDL, they were all too weak with the wind out to 36 hours. And the co-amp TC was too strong with both the winds and the minimum pressure. And uh, for this forecast, the h was the best for both, for both the um, wind and minimum pressure forecast. And then finally, only after 12 hours here, the h warp and the GFDL uh, looked, looked like they were too strong after 12 hours, uh, both of them by about 20 knots and 15 millibars. The co amp TC looked the best for this cycle. So then I, I have some plots, uh, some maps from the GFS. Um, this is from the NSEP site that shows the, the, uh, mean sea level pressure forecast. And there are there are actually two different mean sea level pressure uh, that's output from the GFS. So uh, the plots that I look at from Tropical Tidbits have the, um, the filtered mean sea level pressure, so it's usually weaker than what the actual GFS is forecasting. Um, so this is, so from this forecast, it's hard to see, but the GFS is forecasting a minimum pressure of 945. Uh, this is the analysis. Valid 12 be the 19th. Um, the actual best estimate was 9.38. So not a, too bad of a forecast. The GFS was too weak. Um, actually, at this time, the European model was forecasting, well, the, the analysis was 9.24 millibars. The European was too strong. The GFS was too weak. So the GFS was actually closer to the best estimate at the time. So looking at the same valid time, I looked at the uh, position forecast. Not really focusing too much on the intensity here from tropical tidbits. Uh, again, valid 12D to 19th. So this is the analysis. And I put an X where the remnants of Sarika are. Very weak system at this time. And then uh, high months behind. I also noticed that the GFS analysis seemed to have a larger storm, larger system than the European showed, which I'll show in, uh, in a couple minutes. So this is the 168-hour forecast. The GFS was too slow and too far to the east compared to the X. Um, Sarika, the GFS is forecasting Sarika to be too strong and too far to the south compared to the analysis. 
144 hour forecast, the same, the same kind of, uh, situation. The GFS is still a little bit too slow and too far to the east. Uh, Sarita looks a little bit better, but it's still too far to the south. Uh, 120 hour forecast, the GFS is a stronger storm now, um, but it's still just a little bit too slow and also a little bit too far to the north here. Um, the actual tracks, uh, I put this in the conclusion, but the actual tracks of the GFS and the European model were um, too far to the north in those longer range forecasts. They were between Luzon and Taiwan. Uh, now the GFS is forecasting Sarika to be weaker, and but still a little bit too far to the south compared to where it it hit. Um, the GFS generally has a good position here for HIMA for this one, um, and this is the 96-hour forecast. And then the 72-hour forecast. This is about when the GFS locked into the right position um, for both for both systems, HIMA and Sarika. And then the 48 hour forecast, 24. And then back to the analysis where the GFS has uh, weakened some. But as we saw, the, uh, the actual new level pressure was around 945, too weak by about seven millibars. And then these are from the European model, which show kind of a similar story. Um, the European, like I said, seems to have more of a compact system than the GFS is showing. Uh, so this is the analysis, off by 14 millibars, too strong. 168-hour forecast, the same kind of situation as the GFS. Uh, the European was too slow and too far to the east for uh, Typhoon Haima, and also too far to the south and too strong for Sarika. 144, the same kind of deal. Um, this was actually... Uh, a pretty not a, not a great forecast from the European model. The model was really weak and uh, was even slower than the previous cycle. Uh, I think for this cycle, the GFS had a better forecast from what I remember. The European was actually showing farther north um, between Luzon and Taiwan. 120 hour forecast. Uh, the European is still too far to the east, but much better, closer to the actual position. And then by 96, by 96, or you could argue 72 hours, the European seemed to lock in to the right position. And the European was showing um, too strong of a storm. Uh, 923 millibars was the estimate for this 72-hour forecast. And then 933 millibars. 934 for the 24-hour forecast. And then back to the analysis where it initialized at 9.24 when the best estimate at the time was 9.38. So these are the conclusions that I have. Um, the European model started too far to the north and too slow, uh, just like the GFS. Same kind of Both of the GFS and the European model were actually initially showing a threat to Taiwan. At first I said between Taiwan and Taiwan. But actually some of those longer range forecasts, they were showing a threat to Taiwan. Uh, the GFDL seems to be the latest, so um, the slowest to moving south from Taiwan. The GFS had uh, what seems like a better track from the 12D 13th cycle than the European model, but the GFS is still too slow. Um, the European was much weaker and farther to the north, and the GFS position was generally good, but the timing was off, too slow. And uh, GFS actually remained a little bit too far to the north with the track, um, all the way really up to the 48-hour forecast, um, but was generally pretty close. Uh, the H warp seemed to have better track forecast than the GFS. The GFDL uh, was too far to the north, even for the uh, shorter range forecast, and was showing landfall over Taiwan. Uh, the models seemed to do pretty well for the most part with the intensity forecast. Um, especially the H warp, but even the H warp missed out on those 140 knot winds. Uh, the European model tended to be too strong, even in the analysis, but generally locked into the right position around 96 hours. And I, as I said, um, it seemed like the H warp did the best overall for both the track and intensity forecast. And that's all I have. I can take any questions or comments.
Um, what happened to the stone? Some of the crossing the Soda Caravan back out to the Pacific. Uh, the Rican? Uh, no, the, well, both of them. Oh, uh, um, the Taimans curved around and went east. Uh, well, eventually it did. It it moved towards eastern China and then curved. Because a lot of these storms end up affecting us or Alaska. Right. Yeah, it's a significant event. Do you know where it would happen, where the remnants of this would be now? Um, yeah, that I don't know, because it was back in October 20th. Okay. okay. Any other questions, comments? Um, Tracy, so is this um, GFS means, oh, I know you are showing the ECM, is GFS means a little pressure, the Delta one that you were showing? From the tropical tidbit? Okay. I, I think they are, yeah. Okay. Uh, because the, the, the new one that we output usually are several millibars deeper. Okay. A hurricane situation like that. So it's very possible that GFS forecast was actually better than it looks on that website. Oh, from the from the NSAP website or uh, from the TBIT website. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I might have to email you and get the location of those files. I know for Sandy, uh, the new sea level pressure was five millibar deeper. Okay. Yeah.